Hello everybody, my name is Jamie Thompson and today I'm going to be showing you how you can consume a web service from within the integration services pipeline. I'm going to be using uh, CTP3 of SQL Server Integration Services 2008 to demo this. You'll see why a little bit later. I'm also going to be using a web service called Airport Info. This is a web service which contain, which retrieves information about airports around the world. And if I show you one of the methods on this web service, this one called Get Airport Information by Country. I can type something in here. We'll use France as an example. I'll click Invoke. And here we are. We get a lot of information returned to us about various airports throughout France. We get the airport code, the airport name, information about the runway, we get longitude and latitude information. There's quite a lot of good stuff that we can make use of. I'll close that down again. Let's get back on that. And I'll switch over to Business Intelligence Development Studio. I'm going to right click on packages. I'm going to add a new package for demo. demo. And we're going to be showing how you can consume data within the pipeline. So, of course, we're going to need a, a data flow. Click on that. There we go. We have a data flow. In order to do this, we're going to use the vulnerable script component. So, I'm dragging from my toolbox here. We have three options available to us. People who've used integration services before will be familiar with this. We're going to use it as a source component. So, I'll double click on the component to edit it. Just one thing I want to point out to you, you'll see there's a new property of the script component in Integration Services 2008, it's called script language. We now have the ability to write our scripts in Visual C Sharp as well as Visual Basic, which is really useful. That's been brought about by the introduction of Visual Studio Tools for Applications into the suite. And if I click on Edit Scripts, this will launch us into Visual Studio Tools for Applications. Those of you that are familiar with Visual Studio will uh, notice some similarities. Um, one thing I want to point out to you is that we can now add a web reference, which you couldn't do previously in Integration Services 2005, and that's what I'm going to do here. The URL for this web service is up here. I'll copy that. Paste in the URL. Click Go. Visual Studio Tools for Applications has gone out, interrogated that web service, interrogated the WSDL, and found out all the information that we need to know about it. And I'll click Add Reference. And what Visual Studio Tools for Applications is now doing is building as a proxy class that will enable us to communicate with that web service. And that proxy class is here. You can see it in the object browser. Okay. So we now have. Uh, a web service that we can use within our script component. I just want to head back to the script component quickly. One thing I forgot to do was define some um, output columns that we're going to use here. So if I click on Add Column, I put Longitude. I'm going to make that the equivalent of a big int. I can just find it. There it is. No, nope, that was wrong. Sorry. An 8 byte signed integer. Add another column. This one's going to be airport latitude. Eight byte signed integer integer again. Add column. This one's going to be airport name. And that's more simple, that's going to be a string. Okay, there we go. Okay, we defined our output. I'll go back into the script. Here we are. Open up main.css, which is where all the code sits that we're actually going to use in the script component. Those of you familiar with this will know that create new output rows is the method that we typically deal with when we are writing a source script component. And it's still here in, in, in Integration Services 2008. So in order to use this, 
I'm going to need a using directive for my uh, new class. For some reason it's disappeared. Never mind, I'll add it in again quickly. Sorry about this. Not quite sure what happened there, that's throwing me a bit, but never mind. Okay, we're back in and you'll see that the class has been recreated for us. If I right click on that, copy. That's my using directive. We're also going to need to use system.xml at some point, so I'll add that in as well. Actually, what we can now do is define an object of type airport. I'm going to call it my airport equals new airport. Simple as that. Okay, and I want to get some information back from it, so I'm going to store that information in a variable called response, which is of type string. So my airport dots. Now we're going to use the same method that we used before, which is called get information by country. There it is. Same as before, we need to supply a parameter. I might as well use the same one. So there we go, that's France. And there we go, that's all the code that we need to uh, retrieve information from that web service. But of course we actually need to do something with that data that we get back and is there then stored in, in response. Now, I'm not going to write the code out now, but I do have it stored here, so if I copy it, that's all the code that we need. Now I'm not going to go through this in any detail, I will provide this demo package later on that you can download and take a look at. So you can take a look at the code all for yourself and see exactly what's going on here. But really all the code that I've just added in, all it does is parse the value that is within that response variable and put it into the pipeline. Okay, so we're all, almost ready to go. I'm going to right click on the project and build it. You'll see it's building in the bottom left corner here. And we've got build succeeded, which is good news. So. Click out of this, and I'm back into Business Intelligence Development Studio. You'll see that the red cross that was on my script component has disappeared. That's good news. That means everything's compiled successfully. And in order to take a look at this data, I'm just going to pull on a row count component. Going to need a variable just so that that thing will work, and there it is. Just to configure this row count component correctly. That's all we need there. The row count component is valid. I'm also going to add a data viewer. Standard grid data viewer. Okay, we're ready to go. Now, if I click execute on that package, what the script component will do is go out, interrogate that web service, get some information back, and hopefully pass it back into the pipeline. And here you go. This is the information returned from that web service. We're seeing it in our pipeline. So we get airport name, airport latitude, and airport longitude. And of course, we could have brought in you know, whatever we liked. I'll just run that through to completion. There we go. And we've finished. I hope that's been useful to you, like I say. I will make this package available on uh, my blog, which is blogs.conchango.com slash Jamie Thompson. Uh, thanks for watching. Goodbye.